Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and today I'm going to be showing you guys all of the books that I hauled from November to January. So I think I've got a grand total of a little over 30 books here that I managed to acquire between November and January. Most of these are books that I bought myself, but there are some of these that I got for Christmas, which I'm really excited to show you guys. I've decided to split this up into a few categories. First of all, there are books that I have already read. And these books are books that I most likely purchased because I pulled them for a TBR. A couple of these are eBooks, which I obviously don't have a physical copy to show, but I will mention them as well. The second Second category of books are books that I purchased because they are on my TBR like I've already I'd already put them on my TBR and then I saw them like maybe on book outlet for a good price and went on ahead and purchased them and then the third category are books that are just kind of wild cards books that I just saw maybe hadn't even heard of and purchased so that'll be the third category of books I think that that is about it let's just jump right in and start with the books that I have already read so I think that the book to mention first is the this is literally the first book that I have acquired in this set of books and it is The Call by Peter Ogian which I this made my favorite books of 2022 list I didn't know a lot about this book when I purchased it but I kind of went out on a limb which you know that's you go out on a limb if you don't know much about a book and just buy it fortunately I ended up loving this book so I am really glad that I have a physical copy to to read again next up we have a few books that I have read for my February TBR. Um, the first one is The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark. This I finished reading it I think like a week ago and really enjoyed it. Uh, this is a book that uh, I have a lot of booktube friends who really like this book so I was I definitely wanted to get my hands on it. Next up we have We Need to Do Something by Max Booth the third. Didn't love this one as, as much, but you know, I will elaborate on that whenever I get to my February wrap up. But this was a horror novel, and honestly, though I, it wasn't my favorite, it was a quick read, so you know, no harm, no foul, I guess. And the third book that I read for my February TBR, TBR was Blackwater uh, by Michael McDowell, which I mean, this book, it took me a long time to get through this, but this book was absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to gush over it for my February wrap up. Next up, a couple of ebooks that I purchased uh, include Escape Reality and um, We Should Have Left Well Enough Alone. Escape Reality was a sci-fi novel that I ended up temporarily kind of, I guess, DNFing. Uh, because I own it, I may come back to it later, but I just could not get invested in it when I was reading it. And then We Should Have Left Well Enough Alone, which I ended up really enjoying. It's a short story collection by Ronald Malfi. Uh, I honestly may end up getting, trying to get a hold of a physical copy. I really liked it and would like to, I would like to have it in hand. And last but not least, I am going to show off a little bit. I randomly found this at the bookstore buried behind a lot of other books, and it is this. You really only appreciate this if you have read this book before and are familiar with the series, but The Clan of the Cave Bear by Jean Aul, which it has like a kind of a plastic uh, cover on it. But this is um, a signed first edition. Uh, so whenever I found this, I absolutely could not resist bringing it home with me. There is the autograph by Jean Aul and someone's really adorable unicorn book plate, but whatever. That's the important information right there. I was absolutely thrilled to find this buried on the back of the uh, bookshelf. I'll be bragging about this one for years to come. All right, next category is books that I purchased because they are on my TBR. I have not read them yet, uh, but just wanted to go on ahead and buy them. The first one is Let the Right One In. Uh, this is a vampire story, and I believe that this is... Is it Swedish? It's Scandinavian, I know that much, and they made a movie, and then, of course, in the U.S., they had to uh, remake it, which the original did not need a remake, and I feel pretty strongly about that. The original is an amazing movie, uh, and I and it was based on this book, so I've kind of always wanted to read this, so as soon as I saw this on Book Outlet, I absolutely had to grab it. Next is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, which uh, I actually pulled this many, many months ago in, my, in a TBR video, and I couldn't get a hold of it at the time and ended up just kind of forgetting about it and I just blew it off. But uh, I recently was talking to a good friend of mine who absolutely loved this book and it encouraged me to 
to try to get a hold of it again, so I went on ahead and purchased this one. Next is a book that I got for Christmas, uh, and, and I asked for this book and got it for Christmas, and it was very exciting for me, and it is The Fold by Peter Kleins. Uh, I think Peter Kleins, he wrote Paradox Bound and 14, two super, super fun mind-bending, I guess you'd call them kind of sci-fi adventure novels. So um, from what I understand, this is every bit as fun. So I, I really am excited to get to this one. Next, a book that I had had on my Amazon wish list for a long time and just finally decided to pull the trigger on it. It wasn't that, that expensive. And that is Discount Armageddon by Seanan McGuire. Uh, I've read a couple of Seanan McGuire books, which have been, they've been all right. Uh, but I really wanted to give this series a try because I've heard people say that this is a lot of fun and very different from the types of books that this author generally writes. I'm not entirely certain what it's about, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, kind of like an urban fantasy, and that's one of my favorite genres. Next up, a book that I've had on my TBR for a very long time, and I will actually, I think I'll be reading this in April for the Buzzword Challenge, uh, and the prompt is Emotion. I've been wanting to read it for a while and could not resist this cover, and it is Universal Love by Alexander Weinstein. Uh, I read um, his short story collection, Children of the New World. I think I read that maybe in 2021, and absolutely loved it. it is a sci-fi short story collection and very almost kind of Black Mirror-ish, I guess, sort of like how technology has the power to ruin the world. Judging by this cover with these little like uh, VR headsets on, this may kind of be in the same vein, I'm not sure. Next up, a couple of books that I will, that I actually drew for my, uh, for my March TBR. The first one is uh, Wakers by Orson Scott Card. This has been on my list for a while. I think that this is a YA sci-fi and I got this on Book Outlet. Uh, it had been on my TBR for a while and so whenever I saw it on pop up on there, of course, I had to get it and it was just a few dollars. So grabbed this one. Next, we have a set of books that I got for Christmas. The first one I pulled for my March TBR and it is The Rivers of London, though uh, I got the set of the first, I think, six books in this series. Uh, so the first is The Rivers of London. The second is Moon Over Soho. Third is Whispers Underground. Fourth, we have Broken Homes. Fifth, Foxglove Summer. And sixth, The Hanging Tree. Uh, these books, I honestly don't know a lot about them other than the fact that they are also urban fantasy and I have really been looking forward to getting into these books. I read the first few pages a while back and enjoyed them enough that, you know, I decided to put to put this on my list. I don't know, it may have been a huge mistake for, to ask for all these books. I don't typically uh, want to get a hold of sequels to books if I don't, if I don't know if I'm going to like the, even the first one or not. Uh, I'm going to give it a try though. I'm going to give it a winner's try and hopefully end up loving it. All right, and the final category is books that I purchased, though they were not on my TBR, just kind of random purchases. Actually, I think there is one in here that was also a Christmas gift, but aside from that, I purchased all these without, you know, without them being on my TBR, without knowing much about any of them, really. Uh, the first one is Neverwhere. Now, I have read a couple of Neil Gaiman books, and honestly, they were not my favorite. However, I feel like I need to give him one more shot. Uh, I recently watched Sandman, um, which is, I think it's actually graphic. It was taken from, made from a graphic novel series by Neil Gaiman and absolutely loved it. I really want to get a hold of that graphic series. But the, enjoying that so much just really made me feel like I needed to give him one more shot. So I uh, went on ahead and purchased this and crossing my fingers, I end up liking it more than the other two books of his that I've read. Next, we have other terrors. This is another book that I'm probably going to end up reading for the buzzword challenge for the prompt other, which I cannot remember what month that that prompt is set in. I think that this is a um, horror short story collection or a thriller short story collection. And I mean, just look at that cover, like super creepy. I love it. So hopefully I end up really loving this because this, I don't know, this sounds so cool and this is such a beautiful book. Next up we have Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Uh, this I've heard a lot of people talk about. People seem to really enjoy it. Um, however, 
I don't know. It never really piqued my interest. Um, I think this is supposed to be kind of Lord of the Flies-ish, but with girls and maybe an orphanage. I'm not sure. Uh, and honestly, I now that I have it and the more I think about it, the more excited I am to read it. I think I may end up really enjoying this book. Next is our Crooked Hearts. Um, I'm not exactly sure why I picked this one up. I think it was just something about this cover is so spooky and appealing to me. I don't know. There's something so the eeriness of that cover. It just like really speaks to me. I didn't realize this before, but the author of The Hazelwood, which I, not my favorite book, but I did enjoy it. And I thought conceptually that was a great book. And the author was, I like the way the author wrote. So, uh, hopefully I will at least feel that, that much warmth for this book as well. Next up, a book that I never thought that I would read, and that is Bird Box. I tend to like to read a book and then go see the movie. Um, but if I do it the other way around, see a movie, it is very unlikely that I will read the book. If something is spoiled for me, then there's no point in reading the book. Like I'd, I would rather have that sort of first time experience with the book. Uh, that being said, I really like Josh Maller, Josh Mallerman's writing style. And I've had quite a few people recommend this to me. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I mean, why not? It's a short little book. It's an author that I enjoy and conceptually, come on, Bird Box is great. Next up, we have Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones. This is actually the second book that I bought of Stephen Graham Jones. The first was The Only Good Indians, which I'm pretty sure was in my last haul. Uh, I have not read The Only Good Indians yet either, but all of the booktube friends that I know that enjoy it have similar tastes to mine, so uh, I feel like there's a good chance that I'm going to really enjoy them both. Next, we have The Silence by Tim Lebin. Uh, this book I bought because of it's this author who I think also wrote Relics, a book that I read last year and really, really enjoyed. It was an urban fantasy, and I'm pretty sure this is also an urban fantasy. I think that conceptually this is similar to A Quiet Place, which I never saw that movie, but uh, I know it was about people living in a world where there was some kind of creature that hunted by sound, and so this family had to be very quiet. And I, this, I think, is a similar concept, but it just follows a single character that has to be silent in order to avoid getting eaten or whatever. Uh, I like the idea of that, so <laughs> hopefully I'll enjoy the book. Next we have A Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin. She also wrote Fever Dream, which I purchased. I think that that was also in my last book haul. I still haven't read it yet, but it sounds really out there, really weird, and I don't know. I think I'm really going to like it. And then this is a short story collection. So even if I'm not too into that, I'd be curious to see how she writes short stories and how I feel about that. And also just take a minute to appreciate that cover. Isn't this a gorgeous cover? It kind of feels like rubberized, like very smooth. I think this is such a beautiful book. Next up, we have a book that this is totally random, just stumbled upon this, never heard of it, never saw it before, but couldn't resist uh, The Shape of Darkness. This is a gothic, I think it's kind of a gothic thriller. I'm not usually a huge gothic reader, but there was something about this that, I don't know, I, I it got me really excited. So decided to pick this one up. Next, and don't laugh. Well, you can laugh if you want. I can't hear you. Next, we have The Last Wish, which is the first book in the Witcher series. This is also one that I had never planned on picking up, but I watched the TV show The Witcher and absolutely loved it. And it got me really excited to try the books out. I know that they're very popular. A lot of people really love them. Of course, there are a lot of people that really hate them, and hopefully I'm not going to be one of those. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go into this with an open mind. I've heard some kind of bad stuff about this, so I'm trying to keep my expectations nice and low so I don't end up disappointed. Next up, we have another book that this was absolutely completely random. It just, I'd never heard of it before, never seen it, but it just kind of reached out and grabbed me, and it is The Other Me which I guess I may read this one instead of other tarot. They both have other in the title. So we'll see how, how I feel whenever I get to that. I think that this maybe has something to do with like alternate realities. Uh, there's a little blurb on here that says who hasn't wondered what alternate versions of their lives might look like. So uh, I love a good alternate reality story. So hopefully this one will really work well for me. And last but not least, the the final book that I got for Christmas. I ever since they released this edition, I have been in love in love with it and just really wanted to get my hands on it. I just could not bring myself to buy it out of pocket because because I have another edition of it, but that is a perfect thing to ask for for Christmas, and I did and got it, and that is this beautiful, what is this, the 
10th anniversary edition of Leviathan Wakes. Um, so it's very reflective. Sorry about that. But I just think that this is a absolutely beautiful book. It has hot pink sprayed edges, which I'm not really a pink person, but when it comes in the form of sprayed edges, I like it a lot. On the inside of the dust jacket, we have this like pink foil design on the cover. And the, even the end papers are cool. I mean, look at that. Isn't that just so cool? And then on the inside of the dust jacket, I'm all about this. I absolutely adore this. This is such a cool book. I truly have never been interested in reading it, but now that I have two copies of it, I feel like I kind of have to now. Uh, if you want to know why I have never read it, I think it's just because the, it just seems kind of dense to me. The series is big. The books are all really fat and it's, it's hard sci-fi. So I don't know. I've kind of resisted reading it, but now I feel like I have to. So we'll, we'll see how long it takes me to actually get around to it. All right. So that is going to be it for me today. Those are all of the books that I acquired in November, December, and January. I would be very curious to know if you have read any of these books, what you thought about them. Uh, if there's any of these books that you think I'm really going to love or really going to hate and made a huge mistake by buying them, I hope that you will talk to me about it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like it and possibly subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.